Welcome to the Valley Center Playhouse. Christian sentiment, it seems to me. It's a very practical sentiment. I thought it was black and blue all last year because he happened to make some Leroy Herdman in school. Leroy? Is he the worst one? They're all the worst one. Ralph's the biggest, so if Ralph gets you, that doesn't make any difference. Gladys isn't big, but she's fat and she's mean and she bites. <laughs> Sorry I asked. Just try and stay away from all of them. That's what I said. Stay away from them. Go to church. I'm so glad to hear you say that. No arguments this year about the Christmas pageant. I don't want to be a shepherd again. Tell Mrs. Armstrong you want to be a wise man. I don't want to be in it. Everybody's in it. Think how I would feel sitting there on Christmas Eve if my own children weren't in the pageant. Think how your father would feel. You'd feel <laughs> terrible, wouldn't you, Bob? Well, actually, I wasn't planning on going this year. Look, it's always so crowded, they could use my seat. No, I think I'll just stay home, put on the bathrobe, and relax. Nothing different ever happens at the Christmas pageants. Something different is going to happen this year. What? Charlie is going to wear your bathrobe. You just made that up, Grace. Why don't you meet Joseph? Elmer Hopkins will pay you $3. 
it to be Joseph. Elmer's sick of being Joseph all the time. Just because his father is the minister, nobody wants to be Joseph. Nobody wants to be in it. What are you going to be this year? I know he's in the angel choir. Well, why can't Charlie be in the angel choir? Because I can't sing. <laughs> From what I've heard in the past, that's not a serious drawback. <laughs> Wait a major. Always sounds to me like a closet full of mice. Oh, well, what do you wear in the angel choir? Bed sheets. Oh boy, some sort of a bathrobe or a bed sheet. Come on, let's go and watch TV. You know, Mrs. Armstrong tries very hard to give everyone a lovely experience. Oh, Mom, Mrs. Armstrong just likes to run things. They're right, you know. Helen Armstrong directs the pageant, she runs the potluck supper, and she's chairman of the bazaar. I think she would preach the sermon if anyone would let her. Is that uh, George Armstrong's wife? Yeah. yeah. Maybe she'll try to manage the hospital, because that's where she is. I saw George at the drugstore. He said she broke her leg this morning. She'll be in traction for two weeks, and then she'll be laid up for the first of the year. The first of the year? But they'll have to cancel Christmas. She's in charge of Christmas? Well, she's in <laughs> charge of the pageant and, and the bazaar. I feel sorry for Helen, but who's going to do all those things? I have to go. <laughs> Our Christmas pageant isn't exactly what you call first start entertainment. Mrs. Armstrong breaking her leg was the only unexpected thing that happened to it. It was always the same old Christmas story, and the same old oh, Christmas story, no. and the same old Mary story. And that's what my mother was stuck with. That and Mrs. Armstrong. Tell you again, Grace, how important it is to give everyone a chance. Here's what I do. I always start with Mary, and I tell them that we must choose our Mary very carefully, because after all, Mary was the mother of Jesus. I know, Helen. <laughs> yes, and then I tell them about Joseph and how he was God's choice to be Jesus' father. That's how I explain that. I thought Mrs. Armstrong was attraction. How can she talk on the phone if she's attraction? What do you think attraction is? Where they put you to sleep? <laughs> no such luck. <laughs> Beth, we need, uh, well, napkins, salt and pepper. And I always say, there are no small parts, only small actors. Hey, Charlie, you will uh, save some for the rest of us there, won't you? I'm hungry. You already heard me for my lunch again. Charlie, how can you let him do that to you day after day? How can I stop it? Grace, uh, where's the chicken? Grace, where's the chicken? It's still in the oven. I'll get it. You'll need to get someone to push the baby angels on stage. Otherwise, they get in each other's way and bend their wings. Bob can do that, and he can keep an eye on the shepherds, too. Oh, oh, another word about the angel choir, Grace. Whatever you do, don't let them wear lipstick. They think that oh, just because this is a play, that they have to wear lipstick. Some and it looks I, I terrible. Hello, and, sorry, hello sorry, Grace. Guys. What? I'm coming. Well. Hey, lady. I haven't had a square meal for three whole days. Can you help me with some supper? For heaven's sake, it's you. Well, I was getting very lonely at the table. Well, I guess Helen is lonely at the hospital. As long as the phones are working. I bet she told you about there are no small parts, only small actors. And getting someone to shove the baby angels on and make the shepherd shut up? Yep, she suggested your father. Oh, does that mean I have to go? Oh, and Grace, don't get just anybody's baby for Jesus. Get a quiet one. Better yet, get two if you can. That way, if one turns out to be fuzzy, you can always switch them. <laughs> was stuck 
in the hospital with nothing to do but think of problems, and there weren't going to be any problems. Of course, my mother didn't count on the herpes. That was Charlie's fault. Hey, Leroy, give me back my lunch. Sure, kid. Sure. You stole my dessert again. How do you know? Because it isn't here. What was it? Two Twinkies. Yeah, that's right. That's what it was. Hey, Leroy, you think it's so great to steal my dessert, okay? You know what? I don't care if you steal my dessert. I'll even give you my dessert. I get all the dessert I want to send this to Yeah? What kind of dessert? All kinds of chocolate cake, candies, cookies, big wheels. We get dessert all the time. All we want. You're a wife. Ice cream, donuts, and cups. Who gives them to you? Uh, the minister. Why is he crazy? No, I can be rich. Girl who 
plays marriage should try to be that kind of person. Yeah. Who would like to volunteer to play that part? Uh, yes, Emma Jean, did you have a question? No, I want to be Mary. And Bobble Dad, you want to be Joseph. Yeah! Roy! Oh. Um, well, okay, here's what we'll do. We'll make a list of everybody who'd like to play those parts, and then we'll all decide who it should be. So, Ralph Herdman would like to be Joseph. Now, who else would like to volunteer to be Joseph? Elmer, did I see you raise your hand? No. <laughs> um, just raise your hands. Anybody? Please? All right, well, Ralph Bergman will be our Joseph friend. Now, Imogene has volunteered to be Mary. <clears throat> now, what other names can I put on my list? Maxine? Beth? Alice? Don't you want to be Mary? No, I don't want to. I'll be Mary! Be quiet, Gladys. I'm already Mary. You'll be a wise man. Well, the wise men are usually played by boys, but of course they don't have to be. Oh, you wise man! Me too! Hey, Claudia, you want to be a wise man? Raise your hand! What's a wise man? Just raise your hand! What's left to be? Some angel. I'll be that. What is it? It's the angel of the Lord who appears to the shepherds. Hey, don't 
tell me I'm on your side. And the car is over here. Helen Armstrong is not the only woman alive who can run a Christmas pageant. You know, I had made up my mind just to do the best I could under the circumstances. But now I am going to make this the best Christmas pageant ever. And I'm going to do it with the Herdmans. After all, they were the only ones who raised their hands and, well, I don't care. Good for you, Grace. And the car over there. And you're going to help me. Oh. Does this mean... Yes, you have to go. Oh. <laughs> now, the inn is going to be back here off stage, and the shepherds are going to come in, and they're going to gather around the manger. Where do the shepherds come from, anyway? What's an inn? It's like a motel where people go to spend the night. What people do that? Oh, honestly, people haven't even born yet. There you go. Why? Pay their taxes. At a motel? Be quiet, Ollie. Everybody be quiet. I want to hear her. Begin at the beginning. The beginning? The beginning of the play. What happened first? Imogene, this is the Christmas story from the Bible. Haven't you ever heard the Christmas story from the Bible? Well, that's what this pageant is, so I guess I better read it to you. I don't believe that, do you, that they never heard the Christmas story? Well, why not? They don't even know what a Bible is. And they never went to church in their whole lives. So they tell them we got there told them that we got our Christmas. And now we have to wait all this time for them. Alright. An exchange passed in those days. Joseph went up from Galilee with his wife Mary, being great with child. Pregnant! She was pregnant! <laughs> all right, we all know Mary was pregnant. I don't think it's very nice to say that Mary was pregnant. Well, she was. I don't think your mother should say that Mary was pregnant. It's better to say great with child. I'm not supposed to talk about people being pregnant, especially in church. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. My gosh, they didn't have room for Jesus? Well, nobody knew the baby was going to be Jesus. Didn't Mary know? Didn't he know? What's the matter with Joseph that he didn't tell her and her pregnant and everything? What's a manger? Some kind of bed? Well, there wasn't a crib in the barn, so Mary had to use whatever there was. What would you do if you had a new baby and no bed to put him in? We put Gladys in the bureau. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, you see, there you uh, didn't have a bed for Gladys, and so you had to use something else. Oh, we had a bed. Only Ollie was still in it. She wouldn't get out. You didn't like Gladys. Remember how you didn't like Gladys? I think it was pretty smart of Ollie not to like Gladys right off the bat. Anyway, uh, a manger is a large wooden feeding trough for animals. What were the wadded up clothes? The what? It's set in there. Trapped in a wadded up clothes. Oh, swaddling clothes. Well, people used to wrap their babies up very tightly in large pieces of material to make them feel cozy. They, you mean they tie them up and put them in a feed box? Where was the child welfare? The child welfare is my house. Wasn't. <clears throat> anyway, there were <clears throat> there were shepherds watching over their fields by night, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of what? Gladys, Gladys, I don't know what you're talking about. The mighty mogul of the amazing comics. Chisam! <laughs> and there came
showed up. If they're king, they can get the baby out of the barn and tell the innkeeper where to get off. Anyway, there were kings from the east, and they were sent by Herod, who was, well, he was the main king, and he wanted to find Jesus and have him put to death. Dana, he just got born. They're going to kill a baby? Who's Herod in this play? Herod isn't in the play. He's out to kill the baby, but he's not even in the play? Well, somebody better be Herod. Let Charlie be Herod. And he says, go get me that baby. And they say, okay, because he's a king and all. But then they, they don't do it. They go back in the Um, you know, Mary didn't wear 
earrings. But I have to wear these. I just got my ears pierced, and if I don't wear them, some, and if I don't keep something in them, my ears will grow together. Oh, they're not going to grow together in an hour and a half. What did your doctor tell you? What doctor? Uh, who pierced your ears? Gladys. I bet, I bet she did it with an eye stick, and I bet Imogen's ears will turn black and fall off. We'll just have to find something smaller. And um, Imogen, is, is this your costume? Is this what you're going to wear? You know, you're all supposed to be in your costumes today. This is supposed to be a dress rehearsal. <clears throat> what about you? Where was your costume? Beverly, where's your costume? <coughs> I can't find the hell my wings got all bent. Oh. Well, how about you, Juanita? <coughs> Janet's got my robe. And my mother, she doesn't have any white teeth. So I asked her if I could wear my balloon sheet. And then she said, well, I have to ask you. No, 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 no balloons, white sheets only. And what about you, David? Where's your costume? I haven't got any costume. I was never a shepherd before. You have to wear your father's bathrobe, and that's what I have to do. He hasn't got a bathrobe. What does he hang around the house in? His underwear. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, pretend you're wearing a costume. Are we going through the whole thing? Yes, of course. Oh. Imogen Herdman spent the whole time smoking 
little babies in and followed the smoke and called the fire department. And they came right away. that it doesn't. I have no idea what's going to happen tonight. We never once went through the whole thing. And the Herdman still think it's some kind of spy story. This may be the first Christmas pageant in history where Joseph gets in a fight with the wise men and Mary runs off with the baby. <laughs> where are the kids? All the kids in the world are downstairs in the bed playing on bed sheets. I mean our kids. We're here. You better get your costumes on, we're running out of time. <coughs> it's going to be awful, you know. They look like trick-or-treat. All dressed, fastened together with safety pins, and wearing their moldy old sneakers. Mary, Joseph, I mean. They look like refugees. Well, you know, that's what they were. Mary and Joseph, they were refugees in a way. I mean, they were a long way from home, didn't know anybody, didn't have a place to stay. You know, they were probably cold and tired and hungry, and messy. You know, I don't know about tired and hungry, but they sure are messy. Oh, dear. Do you think I should 
You know, I think you worry too much. Now, I'm going to go and push baby angels on stage and hand out crooks to shepherds and push them on stage. When do I do that? Well, just follow the script. It's back there. All right. Let's see. Okay. Baby angels. Baby angels. Baby angels. Baby angels. Baby angels. Wise men, shepherds. Hey, when did the fire engines come in? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Where's the rest of the children? Yeah. 
eat the salt, and they was awful. And in that region there were shepherds in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night.
Did you believe that was energy burning? And all the rest of it? Irma, I think this is the best Christmas pageant we've ever had. And I'm not sure why, but I think it was them. Oh, I always get teary-eyed over the pageant. I don't know the children of the carols. But you're right. This was the best pageant, and it should have been the worst. There was just something different. Well, the angel of the Lord was different. <laughs> yeah, but I like that part. That lots of spirits. Sometimes you can't even hear the angel of the Lord. I must go find Grace's power. I only wish now that I would have let her use Eugene for baby Jesus. Who was the baby Jesus? Why, it was a doll. Oh, I don't think so, Erna. That was no doll. That's about it. Are there any kids left uh, downstairs? No, everyone's gone. <laughs> you know you have your bathrobe on. You're not going to wear it, are you? And why not? Maybe someone will think I was a shepherd. You know, I wouldn't mind being taken for a shepherd in this Christmas party. Oh, yes, you would. Some lady just came up and hugged you just because I was a shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> Should I take this now? It's the Herdman's ham from their welfare basket. They wouldn't take it back. Leroy said, it's a present. You don't take back a present. Leroy Herdman said that? Didn't say Ham. <clears throat> you and Alice were nothing. Hey, what about the lights? Oh, they're on a timer. They go off at midnight. Yeah, that's not far away. It's almost Christmas. Almost Christmas, kids. Almost Christmas, Charlie. 